Hey everybody, it's Miss Downs coming to you. In the comfort of your own home, we are going to have art. So the nice thing about being able to teach from my house is that I have all these favorite books that I have here that I don't have normally in my classroom. So I thought we would start out with a story of one and me telling you, reading it to you is one of my favorite books of all time. It is called Walter the Farting Dog. It's by William Coxwinkle and Glenn Murray are the author, authors and it's illustrated by Audrey Coleman. Let's get started. This book is dedicated to anyone who's ever felt misunderstood and what's the other word? Misjudged. I think we all have. Here we go. Betty and Billy brought home Walter from the dog pound. But nobody wanted him, said Billy. We love him, said Betty. Well, he smells awful, said Mother. Ugh, I think you better give him a bath. Ugh, he's stinky. Mother walked in and said, he still smells awful. And that's when they got the first clue the telltale farting bubbles in the water. Oh, he's probably just a little nervous, said Mother, hopefully. His stomach must be upset. Blah. But Walter's stomach wasn't upset. Walter's stomach was just fine. It felt perfectly normal. He just farted a lot. Farted when he bathed. And he did it when he played with Betty and Billy. He farted when he walked around the house. And he did it in the dining room. He farted in the kitchen. And he farted in his sleep. That dog farts morning, noon, and night said father. But he can't help it, Daddy, said Betty and Billy. They didn't mind Walter's farts. So what if he farts, Billy said to Betty when they were alone in their room. Betty agreed. Walter agreed too. He sat there looking around innocently, just farting. Ugh, please, somebody take him to the vet. Whoa. Stinky bottom. Farting, said the vet. Or rectal flatulence, as we say in the medical profession. And then the vet prescribed Walter a change in his diet. They gave Walter every kind of dog food. And he still farted. They tried him on cat food. They gave him hot dogs, hamburgers, lettuce and tomato sandwiches, fried chicken. They gave him rabbit food. And they turned him into a vegetarian. But no matter what that dog ate, said father, he still farted. Oh dear. Poor Walter. And then Walter got the blame with everyone else's farts too. If Uncle Irv let one slip, he just went and stood near Walter. Then he'd say, Walter? And everyone would just look at poor Walter. That's not very nice. He's got to go back to the pound, said Father. No, Daddy, please, begs Betty and Billy. Don't send Walter away. He goes tomorrow, said Father. And they pleaded with him. And Walter just sat there and farted. It was all over. That night, Betty and Billy cried in their beds, and Walter looked at them unhappily. Oh, Walter, said Betty, you've just got to stop farting, because Father's going to send you back to the pound tomorrow, said Billy. Oh. Now, Walter realized how serious this issue was. He'd never seen, he would never see Betty and Billy again, and he was upset. 
and he resolved to hold his farts in it forever. So when Betty and Billy fell asleep, he walked down to the kitchen to see if there was anything around to eat. He managed to open the cupboard door with his nose and found a 25-pound bag of low-fart dog biscuits from the vet that he had prescribed, which only made him fart more. And even knew he knew that they made him fart more. Walter couldn't resist. He ate the entire bag. That's bad. That's bad. That's not good, Walter. Mm-mm-mm. And then Walter went and laid down on the sofa. And the gigantic gas bulb began burning, build inside of him. He said, oh, this is going to be trouble, he said to himself nervously. He was afraid of what might happen if he just let it go. He thought maybe the house might even explode. So, he kept it in. It wasn't easy. In fact, it was torture. But he had resolved to never fart again. His future depended on it. And as he lay there, his tail wrapped tightly between his legs, he heard a noise at the window. watched the window slowly open. A pair of burglars came through. They dropped silently into the kitchen. Watch out for the dog, said one of the burglars. Meh, he won't bite, said the other. He's a wimp. Walter might have bitten him just them just then, except that he was so filled with gas, he couldn't move. They tied a rag around his snout so he couldn't bark. Okay, whisper. Let's clear this place out. They took everything they could get their hands on, and Walter wanted to stop them, but he was having unbearable gas pains. He rolled on his back and waved his paws in the air, and he gnashed his teeth. We've got it all, said the second burglar. Let's go. Mm -hmm. That's when Walter let it fly. It was the worst fart of his life. It made a tremendous noise, and it shot him across the room. A hideous cloud filled the air, and the burglars clutched their throat, <coughs> unable to breathe. With tears in their eyes, they raced for the window, and they tried to grab their bag with all the valuables in it, but their arms were too weak from the fart. Let's get out of here. Here, jumped out the window and ran up the block, choking and gasping for air, still blinded by Walter's fart attack. They stepped into the headlights of an approaching police car. Hold it right there, said the policeman. Hmm. Father and mother came down in the morning and they found the window open. And they saw the bag with their valuables in it. And Walter was sitting beside it. He still had that rag tied around his snout. And you'd have to say he looked heroic. He saved the silverware, cried mother. Oh, he saved the VCR, cried father. Good dog, Walter. You're our dog, even if you do fart all the time. That's weird. And so the family learned to live with Walter, the hero farting dog. And this, my friends, is the end of this tale. The end. Now, my artists, your challenge is to come up with the next chapter in Walter's story. What is going to happen next? Who's there? Where does it take place? Draw some pictures. You can put words in if you want to, or just do it by pictures. But it, the story is up to you. So Walter can go anywhere and do anything you want. It's your story now. So you can use paper if you don't have crayons or markers, 
that's okay. I don't either. I actually only have paper and, and pencil here. Do you believe that? An art teacher doesn't have any crayons or markers at home. So it's quite a conundrum, but I'm still going to be able to make things. And I know you can make things too. So your challenge is to continue the story, draw the pictures, the illustrations of Walter and his next adventure. If you're able to email it to me, your parents are able to get to videotape. You can either tell me the story, you can show me the pictures, or just take photographs of the pictures, send them to me in my email, and I will take a look at them. I'm so excited to see where you take Walter next. I love this story, and I love you. So I miss all of you, and I'm so glad we're still going to be able to do art together, and I'll come up with a really great um, assignment for next week, too. All right? Mm -hmm. Bye.